Now, I played you this voicemail a moment ago. Um, hello, a deplorable. You and your fellow deplorables, Kevin McCarthy and Mitch McConnell, you don't want a 9-11 style commission to look into the insurrection inspired by our former uh, inciter and chief president because you can't handle the truth. By the way, before I respond to this, this whole thing, listen to this. Um, hello, a deplorable. You and your fellow deplorable. Isn't that pretty pathetic? That's how you view half the country as deplorable? Because we disagree with you? We disagree with you about Israel? We disagree with you about China? We disagree with you about Iran? We disagree with you about borders? We disagree disagree with you about K through 12 and vouchers. We disagree with you about jacking up the minimum wage 100% to $15. We disagree about raising taxes on so-called rich people. We disagree about imposing more regulations. We support capitalism, not Marxism. So therefore we're deplorable. We disagree with you about calling people deplorable. I don't consider you to be deplorable. I really don't. Wrongheaded, ill-informed, but I've never doubted your motive. I've never felt that people on the left want America to, 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 to burn. Trash American values don't appreciate them. But that's because you're ill-informed. That's because you're misled. That's because you're indoctrinated by the access of indoctrination. And my job, our job, is to deprogram you. But the but the ability of the access of indoctrination to convince you that I, because I disagree with you, am deplorable is stunning. It's the same systemic racism con. The left has much of the country convinced that systemic racism is a major problem and has conned you into believing that anybody who disagrees with that is either a racist or if, if he or she is a person of color, self-loathing. I mean, it's brilliant. Where has a group become successful pursuing I'm a victim and you're an oppressor? Where? I've talked to you about the so-called success sequence put out by researchers at the Brookings Institution and the reason that's important is because Brookings is left wing. And they said in order to escape poverty, you need to do a handful of things. First, finish high school. Presumably one where you graduate with a degree that shows you can read, write, and compute at grade level, which is why I support vouchers. Number one, finish high school. Number two, don't have a kid until you get married or until you are in a committed relationship and don't do it before you're 20 years old. Number three, get a job. And number four, which was not part of the Brookings success sequence, but the late, great Walter Williams, economist, added a fourth. And he said, stay out of the criminal justice system. You do that, you will not be poor. Does that only apply to white people? It is stunning that people like this woman who calls, and she calls a lot, and she listens to the show. And my feeling is when people like that listen to the show, they know something's wrong. Meaning something's wrong with how they feel, how they see things. They're not quite sure what it is. Otherwise, she wouldn't keep listening. We can't have a good faith disagreement? Reparations? Are you kidding me? I was just reading a piece written by a Nigerian writer, novelist, and she said her father told her that her great-grandfather bought and sold slaves in Africa. He was the best at it, became very wealthy, was, was respected both by blacks and whites. And when she asked him how he felt about it, he says, well, obviously it was wrong. But you cannot judge him by the standards of today. You cannot judge him by the values of today. He said it was a perfectly customary practice 
No one thought of it as anything other than customary. So here this woman is saying, my great-grandfather ought not be judged, according to her father, by today's values, today's standards, when slavery was common, when they were doing it. Why then aren't we applying the same principle here? Instead, we're asking people who were never slave owners to give money to people who were never slaves. In other words, we are evaluating slavery through the prism of today's values. It's ridiculous. So even in Africa, many people quoted in this article acknowledge the role that African chiefs played. You know, the myth is, if you watched Roots, that Kunta Kinte was walking down the jungle and a mob inspired by a white guy grabbed him, took him away in ropes. That ain't the way it went down for most of the 12.5 million people taken out of Africa to what became North America. They were captured in battle or captured in raids conducted by other Africans and then sold to slavers who were on the coastal areas. They dared not enter the interior. They had no natural immunity to the diseases that they would have contracted. It could not have taken place without African complicity. Thus, the term kidnapped is a crock, an absolute crock. That's the word that was used in the New York Times 1619 project, kidnapped.